can see the bike yet. It's coming up though. Oh, it's noticeably cooler out here. That's a good thing. Hi, squirrelies. Looks a lot like my old bike, doesn't it? Like my Phoenix. Hello, Grace. There's also little bits of uh, Zuzu in here. This is Willie G. He rides with me. He's my good luck bear. Hello folks, it's Mike Kelly 7 How are you doing today? Hope you're doing well. Even if you trolled me and I told you to go pound sand, I still hope you're doing well. I'm feeling generous. Oh, now I gotta wait for this guy to make his U-turn. Oh, both of these guys I gotta wait for now. I can foresee a time when I'm just not going to want to do this turn anymore. Screw this. God. All right, so today's topic for all you folks out there in YouTube lands. Smarter Cowboy did this already, and Harley Trek did it. So I'm going to do it now, too. 9-11 memory. Normally, I don't do this kind of thing, so I don't like talking about 9-11 a whole lot. It's depressing, but I will tell you. So here's what happened to me. I had moved to Hawaii in the year 2000, possibly taking the very flight to uh, Los Angeles that ended up getting hijacked a year later. But anyway, so I was in Hawaii living there for over a year. I just bought a house in July that year, 2001. I just heard a beep for some reason and I don't know why. I hope that doesn't mean I no longer am recording. It looks like I'm recording. We'll see. So where was I? Yeah, so it's 2001. July, I bought a house. And due to some evil doings by some evil people in Hawaii, my wife lost her job not long after we bought the house. So it was all on me. 1600 bucks a month payment. Now we had planned to marry in September of that year, 2001. We said, all right, let's get married on the 23rd. That's our anniversary. That's when we first started dating. Okay, fine. So then, it's, it's uh, September 11th, 2001. It's about 4, 4.30 in the morning, something like that. And the phone rings. Landline. I didn't have a cell phone back in those days. And so I thought, well, whoever it is, if, if somebody in my family died, they'll still be dead in two hours when I wake up. So I didn't answer it. Then, it, after it rang and it went to the voicemail or the answer machine, it rang again. I said, ah, oh, gee, somebody's really urgently trying to reach me. Fine, I'll get up, I'll answer it. 
So I picked up the phone. It was my brother Mark. He was living in Hawaii at the same time too. He had come out there about six months, not even six months earlier. And uh, all he said was, turn on the TV. And I said, why? And he said, turn on the TV! So, holding my phone since it was cordless, I went downstairs, turned on the TV, and that's when I saw it. It took me a couple of seconds to realize what I was looking at, but I was watching New York, and I saw one building smoking, and the other building was behind a huge plume of smoke, and I couldn't see the other building. And that's when it hit me about the terrorist attacks, because I was listening to what they were saying. I told my brother I love him. And we hung up. And I thought, this is war. This is war. And I thought, geez, it, it could be, next is maybe nuclear. And I live not even a five mile stretch, less than five miles from Pearl Harbor. One of the biggest military bases in the Pacific, if not the biggest and Schofield and all the other ones. Ah, you son of a bitch. So, I'm looking at this plume of smoke, and I'm thinking to myself, well, geez, is, there, is the building behind there? And that's when I realized that the building was actually gone already. By the time I woke up and saw it, Tower 2 had already fallen. And within maybe five to ten minutes of, of realizing this, That's when it hit me that, you know, it hit me. That's when Tower 1 started to fall. And all I could do was, was, you know, bleat weakly. No, is all I could say. Which is sad. And I cried and I called my boss and I said, I don't think you should, I think you should consider closing school today because I thought it could be the end of the world. I had to go to work anyway. Everybody on the way to work and the cars looked normal. Looked like a normal day in Hawaii. I knew the rest of, of the country was freaking out, but in Hawaii it was a normal day. At least in the morning. We spent the rest of the day in, in school watching news footage. We rolled the TV in and we watched news footage in my class. My Japanese students had the attitude of, you know, the United States brought this on itself with all of its evil militaristic policies and if America would just give up all its weapons, the world would be at peace. To which I said, uh, no. Almost got fired over that argument. I wanted so bad to go to New York City. If I had lived in Boston at the time, which I had only lived there a year earlier, I would have gotten in my car and I would have driven down to New York City to help. And lucky I couldn't. There were no planes anymore flying for a couple days. So I couldn't go to New York to help like I had wanted to. And I'm lucky I didn't go, because if I had, I'd be dead now. Being as asthmatic as I am, with all that stuff in the air, if I had worked on that pile like I wanted to, man, I shudder to think. And so I, I obsessed over it. I had PTSD over like it most people probably did. Watched it on the news, watched the videos on YouTube. Absorbed it, absorbed it, absorbed it. 
until I just couldn't handle it anymore. And that's my sad story of 9-11. Alright, it's my Kaylee 7. Talk to you later.